welcome back. My name is Nick and I have Taylor here with me and today we're deep diving into another character of Succession. This is the Lady Shiv. <laughs> the only like girl in the bunch and always looking for her daddy's approval. And just so you know, we've covered a lot of different characters already from Succession, from Logan to Kendall to Roy. We got other characters on the list, like probably Wait, my two favorite, Tom Roy, and Greg. Roy is their last name. Oh, did I say Roy? <laughs> Roman, <laughs> Roman, <laughs> all the Roy's. We'll be covering all the Roy Roy's here. Um, so, and also, if you go to Azar.space, we have a cool cousin Greg shirt. Go check it out. It's one of my favorite designs. I'm wearing my Shire shirt today. Should have been wearing my Greg shirt. Oh well, I messed up. I don't want to change. I'm just dedicated to the content. Okay, <laughs> so let's just jump into it. Shiv and her downward and her downward spiral. <laughs> Shiban Shiv Roy is the only daughter in the Roy family. She possesses natural she possesses natural leadership instincts, but would rather yeah. wield her talents in politics. I think that's a out, that's a bit of an outdated bio. She's kind mm. of left politics behind to do politics in within the company, sort of. <laughs> to to run the company. She wants to be the head honcho. She wants she wants the gig. Yeah, and in the previous episode, you said that in the beginning of the series, we kind of are, you know, she's the only real sibling you can, um, probably most of us can yeah. relate to. Um, she seems the most normal. Yeah. She is a political consultant, so there is that. But um, you do kind of see her kind of descend into this yeah. frenzy of just wanting power. And it's interesting because being a political consultant, being in politics, you do, you know, you want and are wielding power. power in that role. It's just kind of seen more as like, you know, civ civic service. But now she's wanting that sweet sweet dough yeah. <laughs> the roy star right power. and it's so interesting because she she was almost out of the family business yeah she was making a name for herself in season one she she didn't want anything to really even do with the business she was independent she made it on her on her own she obviously the last name roy probably helped her get through a couple doors but like overall she had her own career she was doing the thing and i don't know what it is but there's something with logan not being the center of attention and I think it irked Logan that she was making a name for herself, which wasn't his, like under his name. And, and it's, it was in spite her. of him. It was in yeah. spite of him because she they kind of they kind of allude to the the politician she was working for being like a Bernie Sanders type, yeah. like mm -hmm. more of a populist, not super into capitalism and stuff. So that was obviously like kind of an inherently at a dig at her dad. So, yeah, interesting. It, it was interesting, and it was it was also very interesting the way Logan lies to her to get her into the company. He basically plants the seed like you're you're up and you are up for next in line to run the company. Like that's what brought her over, and it's insane how big of a lie that was. It looks like she's the farthest thing from ever running the company with the way Logan treats her. Even though she does like a good idea, he'll find a way to kick her down. Or just because of one one mistake, he'll like totally like not even see her and blindside her. And and it's sad. And I don't know if it's like I remember when she when he was sick in bed and when Shiv came came to visit him. I think she was the only kid at the time that like visited him in bed. And he 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 called her the name of his wife. I can't remember the name of his mm. wife. And I think like in that moment, Shiv should have realized like he's always going to see her as a, a woman. And in in Logan's mind, I don't think women would ever run a company yeah. or he's succeed above him. Yeah, he's very old school. And like and so I think like no matter what Shiv will ever do, she would never win that approval of Logan. Yeah. Which is sad. Because he, he calls her pinky. He he keeps he keeps her in that like childlike form all the time, just so like he it does he does this with all of his kids. He kicks them. And then he sees if they come back out of love for them. And it's just like, ooh. But with Shiv, I do think that he shows, like, the most fatherly, um, like, affection towards her. And maybe that is the result of her being, like, mm. his daughter, his only daughter. But do you notice that? Like, he yeah. kind of only, he kind of seems to have, like, that affection, more traditional affection towards her and not yeah. really the others. Yeah, I can say it. maybe because he's like a dude and he can't have that affection with his kids, even though he does hug Kendall a couple times. I don't know yeah. if, if that's just to play on his emotions. 
Yeah. You know, it's, I think it was right after the death of the kid. Remember how you like brought him in for like a solid hug and it's like, but at that point it was him like just taking dominance over Kendall. Like you're dominance, not taking this yeah. company. You know, it's like, you know, you're not, so. you know, so it's, it's all, everything's a mind game with, mm-hmm. with, with Logan, but Shiv starts off like probably the best character with intentions overall at the beginning of the story. And then once she gets a taste of power, her story just starts to just go downhill. The way she starts treating Tom, as it is, she was never loyal to Tom in the first place, which is seeds and and it kind of reminds us of Logan himself not being lo- loyal to his spouses and stuff like that. So that's like a pass me down. Mm-hmm. And it's so interesting because her story just gets darker and darker the more she clings to this idea that she can have power. And she never supports Tom. And she always uses Tom and everyone else around her. And even to the point, I think she did the lowest of low of all the siblings when she outed Kendall with all of his dark secrets and stuff. Yeah. And we were just talking about how Roman was like, whoa, hey, this is a guy who does very inappropriate stuff, really doesn't care. And, you know, he's kind of like the asshole brother or the black sheep of the family, maybe we mm-hmm. can say Roman is. But even he was like, I can't I can't do this to Kendall kind of thing. So do you that was last season, right? three yeah that was that was last season oh yeah. my gosh last season it was i just remember every episode i would be like my anxiety i would like literally feel anxious and like every episode felt like a movie like yeah. a, just in like it was so long and it was so like the packed tension. with yeah. every the tension like remember that one scene when she's making a uh, she's speaking to everybody at the company and then that song the Nirvana yeah, song rape plays. Me? Yeah, mm-hmm. Oh my god, that was like yeah. wow. That yeah, and I think that, they that was the triggering for her to write the thing. Yeah. Um, but it she crushes everyone in her path to try to to try to take the crown. You know what I mean? And just like every, like like Logan says, you have to be a killer. And mm-hmm. he, he brought someone to be killer. So she's definitely trying to be a killer. But her betraying Tom is what's the biggest issue for her at the end of season three. By her not being nice to Tom and just like openly telling him that she like is, isn't is in love with him. It wasn't like a like a weird role play thing they were doing. She's like, I don't love you or something yeah. like that. And Tom's like, OK, what's going on here? And it's so interesting because I'm very excited for next season to see the power dynamic shift. Because now Tom's in goodwill with Logan and he's made his mark. He made the right decisions. He made the logical choices to stay in power for himself. He stopped looking out for Shiv because Shiv never looked out for him. And now he's on his own. I mean, he has Greg. He made the deal with the devil kind of thing, you know, Greg. But but they're still married. I mean, he's not yeah. on his own in the sense that like they're yeah. broken up seemingly there's like in the they tease that in the trailer a bit she's like clinging to it right because what else does she have at this point but nick why do you think that she married tom i don't know i because she definitely loved the other dude more yeah the other political guy i'm sorry i can't remember your name but i she definitely <laughs> was in love with him in season one and we i think he comes back before the wedding right to kind yeah. of tease that romance and stuff mm-hmm. and you know i i don't i think she wanted to marry tom because she can control tom Mm. that was the idea and like even the idea too like tom when he when when he's like we're gonna be doing a whole tom breakdown these are notes that you're also gonna hear in tom stuff when when he was like in the in the range of fire to go to jail or prison you know for the (laughs) crimes and all that stuff uh he his only way of being part of the family still was to get shiv pregnant yeah, he was by so doing desperate. that, that's his it's his only lifeline, right? Like that was his only lifeline. But Shiv's like, no, because it's gonna hurt my chances of becoming the CEO or the owner of the company. So it was it was just every every choice she's ever made was has been about herself. And mm-hmm. I think Tom realized that and then Tom made a choice for himself. So and we're gonna be breaking down Tom. Tom's one of my favorite characters my my two favorite characters might be tom and greg overall i'd love their dynamic on screen together and how they're outsiders out of the inner circle but they're kind of leeching on to this idea of wealth and power that they want to be a part of so badly Mm because shiv roman kendall they grew up in it that's all that's all they know so yeah i think um i think that tom was like convenient he was there Mm -hmm. um and he was in the world you know, like mm. it's almost like, well, I don't know if he's an executive or not, but maybe he's, I think he's like a VP. He's so up she, there. 
she's like, if I, f- if I fuse with this VP, that makes me like a sibling and a half rather than, mm. you know, like you said, it's just like all kind of it's seemingly politi- in pursuit. Poli- yeah, but it's like a smarter chess move. Mm-hmm. She'll have, she'll have a, another person to back her, which he does. And he would, he would give her phone, phone calls. Remember like, Oh, they're, they're choosing what's going to happen. But then Shiv, when she went to go visit Kendall, she didn't tell Tom, but you know, who told Tom, Greg. And so like, then Tom realized that Shiv wasn't telling every him, him everything, but he was telling Shiv everything. So he's like, Whoa, this is only going one way. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like it's not, it's not working for him in that way. So yeah. he made the ultimate choice, but she she did some weird stuff because she was all about women empowerment. But then when she becomes part of the company, she would like what didn't she go try to like talk to that lady to talk her out of speaking out against against the company? She like met her at like a playground or something like that. Oh. And she was like, you don't want to do this. Like, yeah. we really did. it was like that weird like, ooh, and it's just like, what is she doing? Like, this is against what she wants to be. And even her friend who was the lawyer decided to go with Kendall and not with her and Logan well, to I think really show like that's why it was really um it, it was really fitting that I think she was a political consultant because like mm. you know she was on whatever she was on like the democratic side but yeah consultants and lobbyists it's kind of that other world of politics that's kind of mm. like you could just be doing this for whatever side and you know it's just like kind of it's a little bit a uh um skeezy i don't know how to yeah. explain it yeah. and and mm-hmm. so it's kind of supposed to be seen as really like um altruistic or moral like she's a moral person for yeah. whatever reason and then it shows that it's like oh yeah that's kind of just like marketing and i, I don't know it, it it was just a it fit. is to a point yeah mm-hmm. so anyways, like the whole um, yeah <laughs> and and even like her with with the group group photo with the politician she hated yeah and they're like forced her to be it's like but she she, did it she's just doing whatever she has to do to to become power and and obviously she she has mommy issues too like her mom literally told her to her face she should have had dogs and not kids yeah and just like what mother would ah, it's 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 such a unhealthy environment they grew up in all the all the roys (laughs) And Nick, something that I realized, I rewatched the trailer again, and when they showed the clip of Connor getting married, it reminded me that I think in every season there's been a wedding. So last oh. season it was the mom, there was Tom and um, season two, Shiv, and was there one in the first season? I think there was one because that's isn't that when the kid died? It wasn't it at a wedding or something like that. That was at Shiv's. That was Shiv's wedding. But I think oh, that so, was the what that was the first season. So that was season one. Then someone got married in season two. I thought so. Anyways, I uh, I don't know if that means anything, but it was just a thought that oh that's interesting. There's been a wedding at one yeah. of those seasons. So mm-hmm. whatever. And, and it's it's interesting too because the idea of love in the show <laughs> it's is so jacked up. <laughs> It is very jacked up. And it's so interesting, too, because their language, the language they use for business is all like sex. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, I can't believe you let them bend you over and do you like that. Or, you know, mm-hmm. they did. And it's so weird because, like, every time there's a sexual conversation, it's about business with the Roy's. Mm-hmm. I can't believe you effed me or you can't do this. And like, and it's like it's like a display of power where love isn't involved at all with the sexual act it's like a separate it, it's just so weird where like love is nowhere to be found with the roys but just the weird sexual power control stuff and it's yeah, it's, yeah very unhealthy <laughs> yeah and it's very not to veer off too far off shiv but it's very obvious with connor and his yeah. wife i think mm-hmm. they're I, I don't know i think they do have some love there but i think it's they're like, happier than all the other <laughs> relationships we've seen but i mean it, it did seem for a bit like she was kind of using him to have her funny play be oh funded. that's right the play oh my gosh yeah there's so many plot lines nick like you had yeah. just you Running just mentioned the, oh my gosh you just mentioned that the Tom going to jail, and I'm like, I forgot about no. that. How do you forget like, about Tom going to jail? It was like the whole, it was his whole story arc in I, season three, and it and it led to like the best Tom scene in history, which is we can talk about next yes. video. But um, a lot, a lot of good Tom scenes, but there was definitely one of the best in season three. Yeah, and I, something I want to point out with Shiv is that she is Australian by birth and has an Australian accent, and she mm. is fantastic oh yeah in this a, role yeah. and you would never know she yes. has like a more american accent than you and i so um 
Yeah, she they're all she's so great. They're all yeah. great. I love succession. It's so good. And if you guys like it, go visit our website, azart.space. We got a great Cousin Greg shirt. Oh, man. I think he's going to take it all. I'm going to keep stating that until he does or doesn't. And I have a 50-50 chance. No, I don't have a 50-50 chance. <laughs> I'm going to keep stating it until I'm blue in the face. And um, we're going to cover a lot of succession here. So subscribe to get all the updates and deep dives on different characters and also themes and stuff like that. I also, I also was thinking about one, too, Taylor. Maybe we got to talk about the camera guy in the show because the camera guy is always sitting at the table he's mm. always in the car and always moving he's like who is the camera guy in yeah. this world he's like an extra character i think we need to we need we do need to talk about those like more um those aspects of it like the writing yeah. and uh-huh. the filming yeah because there's yeah. there's a lot of shaky cam and it feels like there's a guy always following them around it's like mm-hmm. who is this guy subscribe we'll see you on the next as art <laughs> <Bye. laughs>